Hey everybody, how you doing? Today we're going to be tying a fly for you called Joe's Minnow. Uh, Joe's Minnow is a really, really, really effective uh, pattern that imitates, well, can imitate a number of things, but in this case we're going to be using it to imitate uh, salmon fry, in particular a chum fry. Um, as we kind of get into spring here, our uh, juvenile salmon are going to be popping out of the gravel and uh, hungry cutthroat are going to be looking for them. Uh, great fly to fish, great one to tie, uh, very, very, very effective, uh, pretty quick pattern to whip up to. You can uh, throw them together, get a box full in a hurry, um, and enjoy some of this awesome action that we get in the spring fishery. Um, great thing about cutthroat fishing, I mean, anywhere a salmon spawns, you're going to have salmon fry. Salmon fry are a food source. These predators are going to come looking for them, and uh, a lot of opportunities common places to find them you know larger systems like the Harrison for example lots of spawning habitat there lots of salmon fry lots of cutthroat same thing with the Stave River um, you know one of your favorite little creeks or whatever uh, you can even catch them um, that are out in the sloughs Nickerman slough Dudney slough that sort of thing as well so yeah come hang out we'll tie a fly show you one that works real good all right, so I'll just give you a quick rundown on the materials that we're going to use to tie this fly. We're going to start out with our Mustad 9671 streamer hook in a size 10. UTC 70 denier ultra thread in fluorescent white. We've got our Uni Mylar gold and silver tinsel in a number 12. Our Nature Spirit Fish Hunter Marabou in a medium olive. Nature Spirit Fish Hunter Marabou in a fluorescent silver dun. Our Wapsy red over white uh, strung rooster hackle. Some silver Wapsy hologram eyes in a 1 8. And then your favorite year view cure. Um, I happen to like the Raid Zap product. Um, also, local Canadian company as well. A little added bonus there. Um, I'll also have all these materials linked in our description uh, down below. Um, make it easy for you to find them online. All right, so let's get tying. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our Mustad 9671 size 10 streamer hook. We're going to take ourselves a pair of barb pliers here. And we're going to pinch our barb on our hook before putting it in the vise. Secure that in the jaws nice and tight. Perfect. I'm going to tie in our UTC 70 denier fluorescent white tying thread. Laying down a nice base, and that's our foundation for a good fly. So for the tail on this pattern, we're going to use some Nature Spirit Fish Hunter Marabou and Medium Olive. We'll grab ourselves a small clump here. You don't need too much. And tie in our tail. just like that. Now, when tying a fly like this, we're going to be wrapping the body with silver mylar tinsel. And so if you cut off right here, right now, you're going to get you're going to end up with a bump. And in order to create a smooth body, 
we're just going to wind our tying thread over this marabou, bring it forward a little bit, still leaving ourselves room to tie in a head at the end. And we're just going to secure all this down, and that way everything's nice and uniform. So from here, we're going to tie in some size 12 or number 12 uni mylar, gold and silver. So with this pattern, we want the silver to show. So for in order that to happen, you're going to want to tie your tinsel in with the gold side facing up. And same thing all the way along the cross or along the length of the hook shank. That way everything stays nice and uniform. And so now because we put that tied that tinsel in gold facing up we're going to see the silver side as we wrap it forward. Trim that off flush, secure it with a couple extra wraps, and then we're ready for the wing. So the wing on well, this pattern is tied in two stages. First we're going to use a little bit of our Nature Spirit Fish Hunter Marabou in fluorescent silver done. Just a couple of strands, not too much, these little fry or anything but bulky. We're going to take a few strands there and I'll tie just short of the length of the tail. A few wraps to secure that. We're going to go back Grab a little bit more of our olive. That I'll have extend pretty much the same length as the tail, just to give it a little bit of taper. A couple of fibers are a little bit longer, it's not the end of the world. I don't like my flies to finish off clean anyway, I like to have a little bit of natural taper to them. Secure that marabou into place, trim it off. From here, I'm going to take a little bit of Wopsy rooster hackle, nice bright red. We'll tie that in at the throat. Now, this can represent the gills of the fish, you know, some blood, make the fish, look, the bait fish look wounded. Um, also, once the fry start emerging, it's not uncommon to see them with their yolk stack still slightly present. And this will help imitate that. Tie that in right at the head there. Trim that off clean. Cinch all that down nice and tight. And we're going to build ourselves a bit of a thread head here so that we can glue on some stick on eyes.
I got that built up a little bit. Take my trusty whip finish. Don't need too many wraps because we're going to cover this in glue. Just enough to keep it all from unraveling on you. Trim your thread off flush. So from here, to add a little bit of life to this pattern, we'll take some Wopsy hologram eyes. Uh, for this size of fly, I like like a 1 8 um, with a silver background. We transfer, let's see if we can see it here, the eye off the sheet that they come on. And just stick them onto the end of a bodkin here. Makes it way easier to place them on the fly. Hold that right there. Rotator fly over. Stick this guy on. So it's nice and uniform. And proportion wise, these eyes are a little on the big side, but for a fry pattern, you'll notice if you ever see a chum fry or whatever swimming around in the river, or they've got pretty big eyes on them. And it definitely makes them. And there we go, a target and stand out. Just like that. From here, it's going to take a little bit of raids up. Uh, I'm going to use thin in this case. You can use flax. Um, super thin is going to be really, really thin for this kind of application. You do want it to build up a little bit. This is just going to kind of keep all those thread wraps in place as well. Let's hold these eyes where you want them. A little dab will do ya. you. Can manipulate this again with our bodkin. A little bit on the top. Just gonna hit it with my raids up. UV light. Just a few seconds there. And we'll do the same thing here. Turn it upside down, another dab of our resin, just being mindful, try and keep that away from the eye of your hook. If you're out on the water, it can be really, 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 really tough to kind of clear that out even with a, another sharp hook or whatever. Make sure that's clear, spread that around a little bit. Again, hit it with our UV light. And there you have it. That's Joe's Minnow. Great little pattern for cutthroat fishing coming up here in the next couple of weeks as we get into spring. Lots of little salmon fry going to be in around in the rivers. And let me tell you, cutthroat are going to be in there hungry looking for them. Remember to come by, give us a visit here at Sea Run Fly and Tackle. Uh, you can come check us out online, shop online, www.c-run.com. And uh, if you like these videos, uh, feel free, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Um, hope to do a lot more of these for you in the new future. If you got any questions, you know, feel free to pop them on here. Give us a call at the shop, come by. Love to talk to you about them. Thanks for watching.